Oh, I recorded it loud. There we go. All right, so we're recording. This is um, a community call on reporting for COVID-19 and approaches to dealing with um, uh, the needs that you are going to have and maybe already have with uh, um, reporting out on COVID-19 cases. So I think the two main gists for dealing with COVID-19 are um, to in advance before you even get extra money. Now I know some of the LSC funded groups, I think there's already some earmarked funds that are, that are gonna be coming your way or already have. Um, I know other agencies will be asking for additional funds to help deal with the crisis. So even if you don't have a grant right now, probably a swell idea to start um, tagging cases and or time slips as connected to this particular disaster so that when your fundraising people go out, um, they can uh, clearly identify the need. And then, like I said, I know some of you already have some funds that are earmarked. So that's really, you know, <laughs> we're all about client service. But our focus right now is what I'm intend to focus on is how can you get the statistics you need, to satisfy your funders, and then and also go seek funding. And so the main thing that there that we need to do is connect your effort and your cases um, to the COVID nineteen pandemic. And there's a couple of of ways to do that. Um, there is no one way, right? So everybody does this differently. <laughs> I think it may be the case that um, there, it may be the exception that there's one funder who says, I'm going to fund anything you do as long as it's COVID-19 related, and you will literally change the funding code on the case to um, our COVID-19 guardian angel. Thank you very much. They're going to pay for everything. I think it's likely that you may still um, be in a situation where your cases are primarily funded by the same old funders you had, um, but you might be able to either seek supplemental funding or split some of the costs or that sort of thing. So it all depends on how you do your, your sort of accounting. But so one, one choice you have is on your cases, just your regular, you, you don't change anything about funding codes or any of that sort of stuff. If all you wanna know is that this case is somehow COVID-19 related, a way to do that is to have an auxiliary process, or you can even put the disasters field um, on your case profile. What I did is I made an, a little auxiliary form called disaster information. And when I click on that, I'm going to have a choice of whatever disasters I've activated in the lookup. What we do at Legal Server is when there's one big enough that we know about or somebody asks us for it, it, um, we create some more choices here. You don't have to wait for us. Let's say you have a really local disaster, you know, uh, uh, whatever, up in Rochester, there's a terrible flood or an, a, a kind of snowstorm that brings everything to a halt for a couple of weeks or something. It could be a super storm, whatever. You can make your own disaster choices here and you can select more than one. But in addition to you being able to create your own list of disasters, on the back end, which I'm going to show you right now, what we do is we also publish some. And the reason that we do that is so that you can e-transfer those. So now, I mean, we're really thinking broadly and ahead. For a lot of you, this will probably just never be an issue. Um, but what we would like to be able to do, the reason we, we put this in place a long time ago after some hurricanes in Florida was that, um, well, apparently I have misspelled disasters was that um, the idea would be if you wanted to collaborate with others or you wanted to e-transfer cases, you could track the fact that it was that, that case was related to a specific um, disaster uh, across um, multiple agencies. And the way we do that is, see this little LS index? These are some of the, index, in, the um, disasters that we've, we've, we've pegged. If I'm losing you, yeah. it doesn't matter. You don't need to know this unless you are e-transferring cases to other legal server providers, um, or you already have some kind of agreement um, with other, other agencies in your area and you all wanna be able to compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. So did you tag it as coronavirus? Yes, I did. We have an index number. So you can, um, coronavirus is already in there. I should have told them to make it COVID-19 because I know there's a lot of COVID coronaviruses, but <coughs> I don't know, we may change that. Um, 
this auxiliary form, I'm going to say that this case is only related to coronavirus. The reason I put both in there is because unfortunately, it is possible to have a single case connected to more than one. We actually saw that. Um, we had people who, gosh, I'm trying to remember how it went, went from Florida to New Orleans and then um, uh, got caught in, in two storms. It's just, just awful. So this is to say that the case is related in some way. What that means is totally up to you and it's gonna be determined partly by what your funder says counts as related. This is to say that this case is related. And as far as I'm concerned, you can be as creative as your funder will allow uh, for what that means. And we know that it has uh, you know, follow on effects that have nothing to necessarily to do with the, somebody in the household getting sick. And what I did on this example form is there's a second step, right? And now we're asking about COVID-19 specific data. The reason this is just an instruction form with no specific fields is so far, um, uh, there doesn't seem to be any sort of, there's no sort of standard uh, that everybody's asking about COVID-19. The only ones that I could come up with and looking around at what had come out were, uh, there were some people who were asking, um, does anyone in your, was anyone in your household uh, test positive for COVID-19? Um, did anyone, in, did the client actually test positive for COVID-19? But the, the health related one that I saw where they were trying to promulgate some data standards was also said um, they had a long list of symptoms. You know, did anybody in your household have these symptoms? Um, so it's, this is up to you. So one of the things you'll need to know, I think I'm trying to see how many brand new legal server people we have is, Legal server is infinitely flexible. You can make whatever fields you want here to, to then track additional data about COVID-19. An example use case would be you have, your funder says, well, we appreciate that you're tagging cases as COVID-19 related um, for you to tap into this supplemental fund or whatever. Here's some other criteria that have to exist. Um, and so by then creating fields that your workers fill out, you can actually comply with that. So I'm gonna pause right there. The only thing we're talking about right now is how do you take an entire case and indicate that that case is somehow COVID-19 related. So I'm gonna pause and see if anybody has questions or if you have been directed to ask specific questions about COVID-19, I'd love to hear that now. So if you wanna unmute yourself and chime in, I'd love to hear it, team. Anyone? Okay, I'm gonna assume then that what I said is right on the money that there we, and, and I really have looked to see if maybe we're gonna have sort of cross cutting um, a standard set of, set of questions. I haven't seen them. I also thought it was possible that the federal government was gonna use legal aid agencies as part of them, uh, you know, sort of part of the information network to find out more about where the cases landed. I have not seen that yet, uh, but you can create these fields uh, to your heart's content. So now you have cases that are related to COVID-19. It may be that the way you need to calculate this is different. It may be that the, and this is all again, back to your accounting. Another way, which I would consider different to track um, your efforts, your time and effort on COVID-19 stuff is on the time slip itself. So on any, case of course you go to add staff time on any time slip now um this was based on community feedback because i honestly didn't think of this initially you can you can alternatively tag the time slip itself as being COVID 19 or or some multiple multiple disaster related if you want so here i am on a time slip all the regular fields that you see if you look at i'm going to go to the back end of this time slip to add this, all I did was I said, was I grabbed the field, added the field, and I added um, disasters with an S, right? Because we should have been multi-select from the beginning. Uh, we do have a multi-select field now um, that, that we, we, we prefer actually that you use. You could, right? Let's just say in your scheme, it turns out that you're only, you, people can only sort of tag one because of how um, however you're handling this. Remember that always you can you could force a single selection and let them only associate that time with a single disaster. 
but that's all you have to do is drag this disasters field uh, onto the time slip where you want it to be available. And when the, um, when the user goes to enter time, they, um, somebody just pinged me. Um, when the user goes to enter time, they say that my time was, you know, coronavirus related. What did I do? I don't know. I was reviewing a document. How much time? Let's say an hour. So I'm, I'm going to pause there because th these really are two different ways. It probably is the case. Um, it, well, you know, I don't know. It depends on how you get funded. An example of when you might want to use this instead of the other, is let's say all your basic, your, your, your core funding codes for all your cases are staying the same. Your default funding is all the same. Um, but maybe for a, for a limited period of time, you have a funder who says, you know, if on any of the cases you're already handling, and that could be a divorce, a custody, um, you know, a, any other kind of case, um, even in the criminal context, there's some interesting things happening with delays and that sort of thing. Um, we're we're going to let you add up time that you say is, is, spe is especially um, uh, affected by the disaster and, and tag that time. So two different ways. You also could do both, right? If you want to do something super conservative, you could say, we're only going to, I only want to see the time where we're going to tag cases that we've said are, are coronavirus related. And then even when you go and work on that case, you still have to, you know, pull out time that is, of, um, that is, that is coronavirus related as opposed to some other kind of general time. I probably shouldn't even have said that because I don't, I can't think of a scenario where you really want to do that. Okay. So then the only other thing you really need to know is that you can report on it. So it, how you design your report is going to depend on which methodologies you use to grab this data. The example I'm looking at right now, this is, uh, this is disaster time. So this was, um, doesn't matter what kind of case it was. It's just uh, an issue of whether the time slip itself, so, so this is a report based on whether the time slips were tagged as coronavirus related. That's one way to do it. Um, the other way would be, um, you what you could say is, and this is a different way to, re to report it, is instead of changing, I didn't change, notice I have still, you haven't seen me change a funding code. I, in general, I think that's, we, we probably want to avoid that unless there's that magical funder who's going to fund whole cases um, based on COVID-19. Um, all cases that are related to disasters. So this is back at the case level. I said this case is related to uh, coronavirus. And now this report just adds up my time. So in the example time slips I've entered in the last couple of days, I have 10 hours of time on cases for which I I have identified the cases related to coronavirus. The funding codes on those could be Disability Advocacy Project, LSC, you know, some county grant, United Way, doesn't matter, but this is a way to pull out and say, um, even if the primary funder on this was somebody else, here's all the time I've spent on cases that are related to coronavirus. So that's an, another way to slice and dice. Let's see, time on all related disaster and then if you just want to see, you know, which cases you've identified as related to a disaster, that's super easy. Uh, it's a standard report. I have, you know, you just add the filter and you can select which ones. Well, I want to see both Hurricane Harvey and coronavirus run the report. And I guess I didn't put a, oh, uh, that's why, because this one is both Hurricane Harvey and coronavirus. So it showed up. Okay, so questions. Oh, I'm sorry, I should point out one other thing. You can, um, you can also tag outreaches uh, as uh, coronavirus related and the same exact thing applies. You can say this entire outreach is coronavirus related um, or you can go down to the time slip level. It, when in doubt, my suggestion is just tag your case or your outreach as related and not make your staff just make some determination on the individual time slip level, uh, unless you have that funder who says, um, however, however you do your cases, um, tell us about the specific work you did that was 
coronavirus related on those cases and we'll fund that. Okay, questions. Well, first of all, I should ask, um, is there anybody here who has a funder who's already, I, I know LSC, well, I sh actually, I guess, is there anybody here from LSC? I'm, I'm gonna disagree with them on something. Um, and I, I meant to catch that team before they sent their email out. Um, I don't, I think that um, if you, let me put it this way. I think you can use this instead of trying to, to manipulate the funding code on a case. You can just use the, um, uh, the field that says this is disaster related. So just take, you don't, you don't really need another funding code, I don't think. Um, there's another thing you can do if you want your accounting people to split out the time later on. Um, I would honestly, I just use this, but something, a, a technique I really like is um, uh, to create a field that I call also report to. Uh, if you if you were set up recently, you, you came on legal server in the last couple of years, you may have, you may have decided to set this up. Um, the also report to, uh, the idea is you, um, uh, you, you, don't have, you don't have to mess with your uh, funding codes. Huh. I swear I created it. Hmm. Oh, it's a custom one, that's why. Um, you don't have to mess with your funding codes, but you can have a field uh, that just has a multi-select list of also report to. And the, the cool thing about this concept is, let's say, and this is not double dipping. Let's say you have a funder like maybe United Way who says, um, here's some money to go do divorces in um, domestic violence cases. Um, but it's totally fine. If you do more cases like that, that you didn't do with our money, we want to hear about those too, that this does happen, right? And so the also report to um, thing is, a, is, a, is an alternative to trying to do multiple funding codes, which is, can get really confusing. And so you can put that on a case um, there's the also report to one. It's just a custom field that you point to a lookup and, you know, so you, you can list some funders there. Some of the funders who don't mind being, having you report to them cases that weren't paid for with their money. Um, and you just um, maybe put that on a closing form. So on a closing form that, uh, or wherever you want it to be, um, your worker just says also that, you know, you have to train them what, what it means for a case that's eligible to be uh, reported out. out. Hope I didn't confuse things too much there. Okay. So is there anybody on the call who's already got some funding earmarked for COVID-19? Who'd like to share what the criteria are and how you're trying to handle it? This is Elizabeth in Washington State. Um, so Office of Civil Legal Aid uh, has put aside money specifically to expand like tenant defense, landlord tenant work. Um, but we have to make sure it's only for folks whose legal issue is a result of COVID. And so that's why we're tracking. Great, perfect. Um, and that's a pretty long list. Oh, well, I mean, couldn't that be a pretty long list of things that were uh, connected? You think? Uh, yes. Yeah. Those funds are specifically for, I guess it would be any like housing LPC. Okay. So they end up. Okay. So then, and, um, in that case, and Oakla is already a funder. So would you probably set your funding code to Oakla on that? Uh, yes. Um, but the way we think they're going to do that is they're actually just going to ask us for a report at the end to tell them how many folks we saw. Um, that were COVID. That's what I'm thinking is actually going to happen. <laughs> Great. And do you know, uh, I don't want to, and you, is, what's their criteria for, does the, does the person in the household have to have gotten it or been tested or, no. or just impact? Yeah. No. So it can just be loss of income because of COVID and that's why they're getting evicted. Uh, it could be, yeah, anything like that. Perfect. So I think, have, and have y'all already started trying to solve the, the data end of this? Yeah, what we just did, we got in early and we just did a custom code um, and it's just mm -hmm. a yes, no Boolean that we're tracking, but it's, it's doing the job. We can run a report on it. Perfect. Yeah, there's no, nothing wrong with that at all. Um, I think uh, maybe, unfortunately, we're, we're sure for another disaster eventually. Um, a, uh, 
a, a strength if if when you come when something like this happened again is um if you want to use the multi-select then you have the ability of somebody mm -hmm. unfortunately yeah. is impacted by more than one you know you sort of track that over time um and so my guess is for okla you'll be able to run a report just like the one that i showed if i mm -hmm. get back over there uh, just here's all the cases and are they um when you report to them are you report do you report your time is that how you do it you say like here's 300 hours or uh hours we're in volunteer lawyers paid. program and so we okay. have that weird thing through a legal foundation and and they're who we sync all of our cases with and so it's just by cases it's not by time ah by cases okay, okay. great so i think that'll work okay great thank you thanks for um for telling us about that specific example. Ah, oh, Washington. Oh, Okla. <laughs> All right. Uh, other folks, anybody else had some uh, funds already earmarked for COVID-19 uh, disasters? We have another implementation in the chat, Jeff. Um, Bev created a special legal problem code for COVID-19 cases. Yes. Thank you, Bev. That's actually one that I didn't show. I, I didn't even think about preparing for this. So thank you for that. Um, just in case folks haven't done this in a while, if you go to lookups, um, special legal problem code is an interesting animal. Uh, if, if you haven't filled special legal problem code up with uh, some other rubric, it really can be used like a tag for anything. And importantly, um, special legal problem code when you first set it up, um, let's see, let me give an example. So um, I'll get hyper specific. Uh, six, three, nine, you know, bed bugs, right? So you can have a special legal problem code and you could tag it to, you know, let's say I want to know about cases that have to do with bed bugs that are in a private landlord tenant case. Uh, you can do that. But um, you also can take a special legal problem code and have it appear as an option for multiple things. Like I wanna know about bed bugs in mobile homes, private housing, federally subsidized housing, or you know, uh, multiple other things. So that's a, a, another clever solution. If not every agency uses special legal problem code, um, but if you do, so when your users choose problem code, the special legal problem code that'll that they'll see it won't be 224 they'll only see the ones that you've associated with that problem code so if you took um you know let's just do um oh why not call it 2020 um COVID 19 and you do something like control a right now i've got now if i if you use special legal problem code every single legal problem um, COVID-19 would be available as one of the additional special legal problem codes. That's another excellent way to do it. The, um, the I'm not even going to say it's a weakness. I think that's a perfectly great way, way to do it. Um, you would, if you went to try to gather time on that, then you would be adding up the time for all the cases that had that special legal problem code, which would probably work. May I ask Bev um, who the wh which which funder was it that was that was this one for? At, it wasn't actually for a specific funder. It's yet uh, we have some other possible sources, but n not really. It's, it's it's moving. The target keeps moving. So <laughs> um, we just. Yeah, we, I just basically created that was a quick and easy. We don't. I I, I want to uh, uh, jinx myself by saying we don't get many disasters here, um, <laughs> but that's really the only thing we've ever had to try and track this way. So I that was a quick and easy way, something simple that staff wouldn't have to think too hard about trying to figure out how to do it. So so far, where well, I'm hoping it's going to work. That's great. Um, that, that's great. And, and um, for those of you who don't use it, um, not everyone uses special legal problem codes, but if you do, that's a, that's a, that's a, a great solution. Thank you. And John, I see said, uh, it looks like you, you were asking the question, respond yes, if the problem was caused by COVID-19. Um, 
Right. I just create yeah. a, a field on my intake and my pre-screen, mm -hmm. which basically asked whether the case was involved with mm -hmm. uh, coronavirus. And did you by. have a, yep, did you have a specific funder that, uh, to, that you were aiming or is this uh, in, in, in preparation for? Uh, in preparation, funding? however, we will be reporting some cases to LSC since they're funding a certain portion for COVID. And we did run it past them as well. And they gave their blessing. <clears throat> Perfect. That's great. And do you know what the how their formula is working out? Like, what are they gonna, what are they gonna pay for? <laughs> you know, how 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 do you get money from that? Um, basically, they're. Um, I can't tell you entirely, but uh, what I do recall, it looks like it's pretty liberal. Uh, any cases that were involved or uh, negatively with COVID nineteen they will pay for at least time wise. <clears throat> so up to, so the all cap, up to the cap, which is I think around 150. So great. Yeah. Yeah, but they're also great. looking at other, you know, the management's also looking at other grants. So we'll see what else we have to pull. But right now we have that. And then we have one other question about uh, whether the case was affected by the COVID-19. So there's two Boolean questions we ask, and then I can run a report with each, each of those questions. Great. The legal problem was caused by COVID-19. Uh, is the legal problem a result of COVID-19 pandemic? And then the other one those, was affected negatively by Got it. Good night. Got it. Great. Thank you. Um, is there anything that you're struggling with, John? Or you feel like you've got this uh, for this disaster, at least feel like you got what you need? Not struggling yet, but I'm going to probably end up having to figure out how much time we spent. We do have a uh, funding code that we put towards uh, COVID-19 or coronavirus, but we haven't used it. I'm not sure if we know how we plan on using it. Time-wise, I'm it. Use it there, but I like your idea of using the the disaster field in the time slip. <clears throat> yeah, it makes sense, especially if they're going to apply an extra rule. And then for some folks, right, there's a um, the way they decide to send to report to funders what their sort of share of the bill is, 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 you know, there, there really is an art to it. I'm not saying that anybody's doing anything right. shady, but there's sort of an art to it. You know, you look at all these cases and what you want to do is you want to maximize uh, the funding that you qualify for from every grant. And so once that's tapped out, uh, you know, so typically um, uh, there'll be a sort of core foundational, you know, funding code on a case that is default. Um, and then, you know, by t just by tagging what, like what you did, they'll be able to say, well, um, to, to get all this money, <laughs> we're going to split the bill <laughs> among different funders. So. Yeah. Awesome. And it's interesting, you know, some push it down. So some agencies are much more the other way around. They basically do a lot of training of their frontline staff and their caseworkers to try to get them to understand all the rules and qualifications they possibly can for every grant and every case, and then uh, regularly sort of update them on, hey, we're underbilling this or we're overbilling that, and kind of um, and try to try to um, uh, handle that more at the case level and less on the on the back end. But thank you, thank you for that example. Is there um, is there anyone else who has a present funder for COVID nineteen stuff um, with any uh, requirements they wanted to share? So the example for this, for, for reporting, um, is going to be like this one. So time on all cases related to disasters. So, and this is for those who built a custom field to do this, right? You just add this as one of the filters on your reports. And I think this, this sample report I made uh, explains this a little bit. So in this, exam, in this um, demo site, I did both. I put, time, I put on time slip and I put the disaster field, which could be your own custom field 
uh, on the case. And you can see that there's a, hopefully you can see that, I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see there's a, there's a few cases where, that have no time slips that were, were affirmatively identified as related to the coronavirus. But in this report, I asked for, that wasn't what I was asking for. I wanted to filter just on whether the case itself as a whole um, had anything to do with coronavirus. And so those would give you obviously two different numbers if you use both of them. Um, and I think you'd be guided by how, um, what, what your funder rules are. And the way I did that in case anybody hasn't been back in here and reports for a little while, I just uh, looked at um, my, uh, well actually, so is a timekeeping report. So my base report is timekeeping, um, but this report was asking about an aspect of cases, right? So I needed to add the cases subtable. So I'm in the timekeeping realm because I'm adding up time, um, but I needed to add the cases subtable. And the reason I needed to add that is so that I could get at um, uh, the disasters characteristic of the case because I needed to get um, that aspect of the case rather than the time slip and you just add um, the disasters field on and then do your filtering. One little trick there is you notice the field is called disasters, whether it's in the case or on the time slip or on an outreach. As soon as I added that field to the report, I went down and um, modified the column header so that, because if I hadn't done that, both of these columns would say disasters and I'd be confused about whether we were talking about whether the disaster had to do with the time slip or the case. So as soon as I added that column, I went down and edited the time slip column header and said, you know, this is um, uh, the time slip is disaster related. And on the other column, I renamed it case is disaster related. Uh, Okay, so yep, we'll definitely send this out to everyone. Uh, at LSNF, you haven't had specific requirements, Connie says, hey Connie, but created a questionnaire that is completed by intake staff to help identify cases. Uh, we also attached a required field to our time slip to indicate whether it's COVID-19 related. Totally great. We basically built a similar solution just to make it a little easier for y'all, but it looks like um, you've resolved it that way. I'm curious, Connie, so your um, questionnaire, would you mind sharing a little bit about um, some of the questions that you ask uh, to see if something is uh, COVID related? Okay. How about Sandy? Sandy said special, oh, special characteristics, right? So there is a, um, there's a multi-select field um, called special characteristics, which is general purpose. You could also use that. Um, and, oh, and you set up basic COVID-19 COVID funding codes. Um, do you, uh, I'm, I am curious what people are using to identify, um, sounds like, you know, were you impacted? And then the only other ones, like I said, I could find were, um, was somebody in the household tested uh, or do they have symptoms? That's what I've seen. If there's, if, and if anybody on the call has seen people trying to uh, promote data standards around this, I'd love to see what they are. I think, you know, Ivy was certainly willing to, for us to create some more system fields around COVID-19, but my response so far has been, they're not really a data standard other than, is it related? Um, okay. Any questions or suggestions team for the other folks who are here? Ah, I see a lot of my friends on the call. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, if you wanted to, to get fancy, folks, um, if you haven't played around with guided navigation, um, which I'm, 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 I'm advocating that we change the part that you might use for this to um, a logic engine, because it's really using the logic engine behind guided navigation. Uh, back over here on the, um, uh, the special form I created, it's just, created a very simple branch logic form. Uh, so I'm on, I'm a pending case, ignore the fact that it's pending. If I wanted to put in disaster information, this, this, is, this is kind of the long way, but if, if you're in a real disaster prone area, um, like Florida or, you know, frankly, Texas, Louisiana, any of the hurricane areas, um, you, you may find yourself with um, people wanting to collect more specific data about the disasters. Um, so what I did is I just said, let's 
figure out the disaster. And then on the, on, I could have done this all on one page actually. Uh, but in case it got long, I made it two steps. And then behind the scenes, in case you, you haven't worked on with branch logic recently, um, behind the scenes, you just put the branch logic block on the form. And then for each answer, that's what this section is. I made a little, a, a very small form. It's called the branch logic form, of course. And so it's going to show that form. It's going to show the hurricane data form or the COVID-19 data form I made if those uh, are selected on the case. Uh, but you could, if you want to do, if you want to ask uh, more complex questions uh, and, and one thing leads to another and there's a lot of conditions. So I might want to say, did anyone in the household have COVID-19 or COVID-19 symptoms, right? So a real broad question. Um, if the answer is no, maybe I don't want to ask anything else. Show no forms, right? Um, you can do something like in, in, in guided navigation, you can have multiple conditions. So you could say something like, well, if, if they said that anybody in the household had symptoms or anyone in the household tested positive, or the client tested positive, then do X thing. So for those of you who haven't had a chance to play around with it, if you find yourself um, making a more complex uh, um, interview, uh, take a look at guided navigation. And we have, uh, it's almost about once a month, Leah or uh, one of our team uh, does uh, another uh, sort of update on guided nav. I think we're about every other month talk, talking about guided nav to help you with it. It's just a fancier way, much fancier way to do branch logic with them. Um, complicated conditions. So Leah said they consider, hi Leah, uh, Leah Myers said every, whether the person's problem or the resolution of the problem is negatively impacted. Oh, and you've given staff some examples. Um, but for example, a delay in execution of an eviction because of COVID, <laughs> not a disaster case if you're getting a benefit. Yes, right. So negatively, I think is the key word. Um, it is happening um, that, you know, in New York courts, no evictions, unfortunately, it also means um, illegal evictions. Um, tenants, I think, are having a hard time getting any kind of enforcement, of course, getting any emergency orders to be put back in. Um, so we know that's happening too. But that's a good point. Um, if you're just affected, um, you could have been, it's possible you're positively affected. Oh, aren't we a bunch of lawyers, but it's true. Um, all right, we're using the disaster fields with branch logic to bring up generic note, asking to explain how. That's a really good thought. <laughs> you know, if you, if you were ever had your feet to the fire, you could say, well, auditor, let me open that up. Here's some notes about how this client was impacted. Great. Terrific. So, uh, Sarah, I know you, you guys are not LSC funded. Are you, um, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask if you're uh, looking for prospective funding or if there's somebody in particular that um, you need to satisfy with this data. What do you, what's going um, on? We are working with the city um, and Law New York and the Housing Council um, for some eviction funding. Um, and then we are just doing sort of the bare minimum um, on the pre-screen, how has the applicant been affected or has the applicant been affected by one of the following? And so far it's only COVID-19, but there's room for growth if needed. Um, like if there's a second wave that we need to track. Um, and then on the intake, um, going in a little deeper, um, is this case related to COVID? Um, and then with a multi-select of how it's related. Um, and then if the client has any other issues or questions related besides like the legal problem code that they're calling about with a multi-select. Um, mm. And then we also are um, gonna update our current cases. So we can you know, tell a funder this is how many cases or people were, were that are benefiting from our help? Got it, got it. You know, it's it's it's, it's and I'm sorry that the in the world 
there's people casting about for solutions. I feel like we all just want to shout, there's already people who deal with the most vulnerable people in our country, like every day. We, we know how to help. <laughs> we know how to find them. We know how to talk to them. We know what the problems are that are going to come about. And it's not just going to be a big hospital bill. Um, uh, so great. That sounds uh, really smart. Um, and thank you for the additions, additional questions. I you don't mind, I, I'm not going to do it on this call, but I may pop in and just take a screenshot of, of the questions you've had and, and um, tap a couple of my friends here. We'll, we'll send out an email on the email list uh, pointing people to this um, so they can see what questions their colleagues have asked. So thank you. Sarah. Okay, Sorry yeah, I just the spot. finished the, no, it's fine. I just finished the lookups last night. So um, hopefully tonight I'll have them on our site. Um, oh, awesome. But we'll see. So we have the pre-screen one, um, just the basic has applicant been affected by COVID, but the disasters field. Got it, thank you. All right, Cecilia, raise your hand. How can we help you, Cecilia? Do you have a question? All right, uh, Amanda said in, uh, I put a custom field on our intake pre-screen forms asking if the case is related or exacerbated uh, by COVID-19. It's a big word, exacerbated. If yes, there's a branch logic text box to explain how, why, that makes sense. I also put the form on into our actions edit case info forms to update the question if need be. That makes sense too. I guess um, for, th thanks uh, Amanda, that reminds me that um, you, uh, if, if one only puts the question up in intake, right, and it doesn't become obvious until later on uh, in the case that there's a COVID issue, or maybe the COVID issue doesn't pop up until later. I mean, we're all scared. <laughs> we're scared around here. My, you know, who knows uh, what, what's going to happen. I, I have lots of friends and family who don't know if they're going to have their job tomorrow, uh, but so far I do. Um, then COVID pops up. So it'd be, it would be good to have a way for people mid case to indicate that. Um, so my, and, and, and you, you all added a funding code too. I, I will, again, just go back to my sort of caution at the beginning. That sounds, it definitely works for some, the way some people do their calculation. Um, the real question about whether you need a, a funding code, you definitely want to involve your, um, the people who do your accounting, uh, because remember the funding code in, in legal server, like that's your sort of default. And um, it can, it's, it's also gonna be the default uh, funding code for the time slips. And so, um, yeah, just consider that. Be, be frugal, I would say, about making new funding codes, unless it really is gonna be a pot of money uh, that pays for, for cases. And then, thank goodness folks are putting money where it's needed. Okay, uh, other comments or suggestions? Well, I hope, um, you know, everybody here is part of our, uh, our national listserv. We will, um, we will circulate this link and I'll just say, hey, friends, here's some examples of what folks have been asking to collect the information. Uh, I'd love it if you have uh, examples to, to, to share. I know there's some people who are still figuring out exactly what the wording is going to look like on theirs. And um, the whole, whole idea of having a community is we can learn from each other. Uh, so any other, any other questions or comments before we depart? Amy, you win the coolest icon in Zoom for sure. Uh, Jeff, it's Michael. Jeff. Uh, yes. Thank you. Go ahead, Michael. So one quick thing that uh, the organization I was at before the server did when we were looking with Harvey um, and we had grants that covered that is that uh, it was really important for us to make sure that everyone understood what our definition was and that mm -hmm. um, and we were actually having to re report to the funder what our definition of Harvey affected was right and mm -hmm. so that that's something to really be clear about with your your staff and maybe instructions and other ways to say right what is what do you mean by related and putting that in in as much detail as you can so that everyone understands oh wait i could have included that case in here 
um, and to ma make sure that those instructions are, are really clear from the, from the get go. That's great. Okay. And, and uh, I would love for folks to use them more broadly in general. I mean, instructions can be, uh, you know, sometimes we see really complex uh, branch logic built when maybe a tidy instruction might have to just direct people to the right thing might have might have served the purpose. Um, COVID nineteen case must follow up to be really to be COVID nineteen. There we go. How about this? To be COVID nineteen related. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and it sounds like uh, Leah, for instance, gave people some uh, uh, some examples uh, in their training about what it meant. So. Thank you, Michael. All right, team. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, and I, I thank you again for, for all your help that you're providing to, uh, to, to the people you serve. If there's anything we can do to be of, of greater assistance, let me know. And I um, hope everyone stays, stays well and healthy. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, Jeff.